She was one of the very few women to study medicine back in those days. Uh, she graduated in, uh, what, 1915, uh, which was pretty amazing. She was a unique person, a unique. There's never, never will be another Dr. Gwen, never. Oh, look, there's so much to tell you about Gwen. But she came from a very wealthy family. The Wisewold solicitors, Frank Wisewold was her father. Her mother was uh, uh, from Tasmania, one of the fields from Westbury in Tasmania. Very, very wealthy people, very influential people. How she ever finished up in this little town, it's just an amazing story. 1938 she came here, when she was about 57 years old, when most people were thinking of retiring. She and Ella, her, her, her companion, made their home here in Trentham. She fell foul of Dame Mabel Brooks, who actually ran the Queen Victoria Hospital. Dame Mabel ruled, ruled it with a fist of iron, and she didn't like Gwen because of Gwen's bohemian ways. She mixed with the arty farty people of St Kilda. She lived in uh, St Kilda. And um, she used to just outrage uh, Dame Mabel Brooks because of her uh, wild parties she used to have, mixing with all these bohemian artists and things. And she rode a motorbike, would you believe that? A doctor, a female doctor, which is rare anyway, riding a motorbike on her rounds in Melbourne. This sort of stuff, you know. Dame Mabel Brooks had her in the gun and she found a reason, I'm not sure, never been able to find out exactly what happened, but she had her in the gun and she found a reason to sack her. She was fired from the Queen Victoria Hospital. Now that meant the end of her career in Melbourne. To be sacked from the Queen Vic Hospital, end of story. So that's when she came to Trentham. Instead of packing it in, and she thought about taking up the brush and um, she was an artist, she was a very skilled artist too. She thought about that but now decided she would come to Trentham and set up a practice here. <laughs> when she came to Trentham, she looked around and said, this is a cold place, it's freezing here. So she dressed appropriately. She wore men's clothes, men's boots, men's trousers, men's overcoats. Uh, she dressed like a male. And it was obviously good, you know, but that sort of shocked the people at Trentham movies. It was ultra conservative town. When she arrived here in 1938, this town was uh, one of the most conservative little towns in Australia. Fortunately for her, I suppose, there was a baby boom going on at this time. In the first few weeks she was here, she delivered umpteen babies and established herself as a, a competent physician. The people of Trentham accepted her straight away virtually, in spite of the fact that she's uh, a bit strange. Yeah, she used to drive a pickup truck, a big old Dodge to pickup truck. That was a, and she carried a door in the back. That was the to the house door. That was the stretcher she carried around. Um, and she made her way through this place in the winter, it was pretty fierce back then. Uh, mud roads, I mean the roads were not made and she used to travel all around this district uh, looking after the sick. Uh, she had rooms down in Blackwood which is about uh, 8 kilometres, 10 kilometres down the road. And the road between here and there was pretty rugged. Um, so she did all that, she'd, uh, and she'd sort of go till she dropped. People would see her pulled up on the side of the road, asleep, dead to the world. Because she just kept going and going, yeah. She used to operate there at the hospital. She uh, and Dr. J.C.M. Harper was a, a doctor. Uh, they used to work together. Uh, and she did quite a lot of operating uh, field work up there. And, and here too. Uh, at the Trentham Hospital, which was a bit of a joke, and uh, two beds and uh, one nurse, and it was her hospital, it was Dr. Gwen. Mm. Much so. Um, she treated people for nothing. She rarely sent a bill. 
very rarely sent an account. She came here with a companion, uh, Ella Miller Bell, which is a lovely name, a Scottish lass that she met in Melbourne. She teamed up with, uh, with her for many years, I'm not sure of the date, but probably shortly after she graduated and started in medicine, uh, probably about 1918, thereabouts. Uh, Gwenny absolutely adored, adored her. Uh, Ella, towards the end of her life, for many years, was absolutely stricken with arthritis. She could hardly get around. And Gwenny nursed her at home until the day she died. Completely devoted to her. A wonderful person. The people at Trentham didn't ask any questions about her at all. They accepted her as a doctor and a good person. They didn't, no one, when I first started writing and investigate Gwen when I came here, no one knew anything about her. She arrived in Trentham set up her practice and that's all the people of Trentham cared about. She was a good doctor and they loved her. She was attending a meeting of the committee that ran the little bush nursing hospitals and she suffered a heart attack at the meeting and uh, she was put into bed and she died uh, that night in her hospital and I think it was quite fitting that's the way she, she went. I mean, she was a marvellous doctor and uh, very talented, highly, highly regarded surgeon in Melbourne. She was. Um, and she saved a lot of lives. A lot of lives. And I think that, uh, that's what I'd like people to know about her. More than anything else, uh, her sexuality aside, I don't think that's a, that comes into it at all. She uh, was just a wonderful person.